Let's go back a couple of hundred years and delve into Bristol's history. The Reverend Samuel Sayre compiled a two-volume historical survey of the city. It's a scholarly work covering the period from antiquity to 1760. Sayre's map shows the Iron Age forts which existed long before the select suburb of Clifton was founded. We see only woodland and pasture. But there is one structure, perched high above the river at the edge of the gorge. A windmill. And in his second volume we can see that it's now labelled as an observatory close by a proposed suspension bridge. This stereo card shows the observatory in the distance, from the bridge's unfinished Clifton Tower and the existence of Hotwell House Spa, it is showing us a pre-1862 view. The building on the highest point in Bristol started life as a windmill for grinding corn in 1766. It was then converted to a snuff mill, but one stormy night the wooden vanes were overspun by the wind and it caught fire. It lay derelict for 50 years, with only the walls standing. In the 1830s, artists were attracted to the dramatic scenery of the Avon Gorge. One of them, William West, who also had an interest in optics and telescopes, made his home here. He leased the ruined tower for five shillings a year and built his home adjoining it. He installed a camera obscura, then added telescopes, a wind gauge and an astronomical clock. And so, for more than 190 years, a 5-inch convex lens in a revolving cowling in the roof has projected images of the surroundings. It's like a submarine's periscope. It rotates and scans the views. An angled mirror reflects them down onto a white, saucer-shaped table in a darkened room. Just think, Two years later, in 1831, when work on the Clifton Suspension Bridge began, local folk could have watched a diminutive figure in a stovepipe hat overseeing the navvies as they worked. If only there had been a camera set up here to record events. West did have an interest in the subject. He had those lenses and experimented with light-sensitive paper. But at that time, photography was in its infancy. Perhaps he was on the path of history a little too early. It's a trick of light and mirrors, and must have seemed quite unnerving when seen by a deeply superstitious public back then. In those days of myths, rituals and false beliefs, people must have thought it the work of the devil. Is it alchemy performed in a darkened room? The magician Merlin's round table? Or perhaps a 19th century version of a Harry Potter tale? From the bridge, we can just make out a little yellow fence below the observatory tower. It peeps enticingly out from the sheer rock face. From across the gorge, we get an idea of how it relates to the observatory tower. But how do we get down to it? Well, William West didn't just look up, he also looked down. He applied to the owners, the Society of Merton Venturers, for permission to drive a shaft down to a cave. He argued doing so would be of much geological interest and a source of gratification to visitors. After two years of hard tunnelling, costing over £1,300, he'd excavated a 200 foot long passage beneath the observatory. It 
it opens out into the giant's cave, what had once been a medieval hermit's cell. As you emerge, you are confronted with an astonishing vista so close to a major city centre, ancient deciduous woodland opposite, while below the brown river, always moving with its enormous tidal flow. And the bridge, that incomparable fusion of engineering and nature. The architectural historian Nikolaus Pevsner described it as pure functional geometry swinging out in a glorious curve to conquer the 700 feet chasm. We're more than 200 feet above the river and visitors have stood here and relished the views since 1837. The observatory and its cave, each offering unique views of one of the world's great early suspension bridges. Here's a familiar enough scene, yet somehow unsettlingly unreal. Cars and people seem to float on the white dish, and watching them we can imagine the sense of wonder that early photography must have engendered, the power to confer permanence on the ephemeral. And for the other view, duck your head and descend that dark, damp, narrow passage down to a cave and get a peregrine falcon's eye view of the bridge. Our forebears of the late Georgian era knew nothing of cinema or plasma screens, but they certainly made up for it with exciting and imaginative entertainments. <laughs>